Oh man, you're a dumb. What up? What up? What up? Really, <laughs> nigga. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> uh, <laughs> dumb. So dumb. <laughs> oh man, it's the little things, man. It's the little things in life. <laughs> Oh, man. Are we going to start with that now every time? Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> what did you drink this morning, right? <laughs> <sighs> oh, wow. <laughs> good, being good. It is so good. This is this is growth, bro. This is progression. They don't know. <laughs> they don't know. Really, nigga. Oh man, come a long way. Come a long way. <laughs> That's a problem. Oh Jeez. man. What's up, bro? Where you at? What's what's going on? No, no, I decided to be in my in my bedroom just so I don't just so I don't wake up Zeni. Oh, okay. It looks very yeah, scenic. Oh, you just actually close the door properly. Mm. <coughs> yeah. Back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, bro. You for the past week, what's been happening? What's been happening? Ah, dude. Work. You know, I've been I've spent the whole week trying to finish everything that I'm supposed to do. Um the long, long to-do lists that I've just chipped into. I think I've only got a I've got real control over my list maybe today or yesterday. So yeah, I can actually like today I actually made a beat for me. Like for the first time in a long time. I made a beat where I was able to do what I wanted to do. It wasn't a, yeah. a commission, it wasn't an artist asking for a, a track or a mix or something like that. So yeah, finally good to be in a what I said, remember what I said to you. I said I don't want to get into that spot without you and where you doing this thing for people and then you end up always having to work on stuff that you don't necessarily want to work on which mm -hmm. is basically your life but this is my life right now yeah, yeah. but what those little because also the other thing is i just finished it's the beginning of the month so i just finished the beat challenge and oh, yeah. that was me trying to squeeze in space to do my own thing but even that became it was a challenge so you know i'm trying to get the next beat done Whereas now there's yeah. no, there's no, um, what's this? There's no pressure. So I went back, listened to some old beats, pulled some up, pulled up some new ideas. I actually finished three of which all of them are, are perfect for TV. So I'm going to send them through to the publisher tomorrow. And this is stuff yeah, that yeah. I've just, I've been failing to do. So I think sometimes you kind of just need that, those few extra hours just to, yeah. to cover what you need to cover. Mm. Right, man. Uh, today, you sent me a message about what we're going to talk about today. Yeah. Uh, what's it? The state of the South African music, music economy. economy. Yeah, yeah. So, the question was brought up. Um, someone sent me a message because I put up a, a status yesterday. Essentially, it was it was a meme, and the meme had I think it had it had government. And government was handing help over to um, corporations, and then there was the people on the side. But then corporations was getting the help in the water, right? And then the next picture was what was happening under the water, and under the mm. water was musicians just chilling, <laughs> <laughs> almost as though they'd accepted their fate. You know, it's death. Whatever's gonna happen. Yeah, dude. Nobody, nobody cares about musicians. Exactly. Nobody cares. Like, I don't know. I don't know what they were expecting. Like, from the from the moment money was spoken about, I was like, I will be damn surprised mm -hmm. if anyone in the music industry gets money. Yeah. I'll I'll be damn surprised. I asked um I asked what the other girl uh the, that booking agent that potential booking agent I had. I asked her like how things going. Like, did anyone get money? She said. She said some people did, but it was like, you know, like, uh, it wasn't like artists and stuff. It was like music related industries, if you know what I mean. They got money, but not really artists. So, yeah. So there have been know funds. Mean. There have been mm -hmm. funds. And uh, someone replied, actually replied to that WhatsApp status. And they said, they're going to be doing like, um, not a march, but they're going to be doing a whole social media thing for creatives. And if it's just the events space. 
And what he said is that, um, what's this? They've been applying, and I've, I know some artists that are receiving, the only thing that they're receiving is the 350. You know the 350 that Cyril uh, promised us? So I've got a few artists who are receiving that because they're unemployed. But with the funds, the artists, you know the relief funds that are meant for arts and culture? They have like really strict um, criteria for you to receive that money. So they'll say things, and I, when I read through the list of things, I was like, there's no ways that artists keep this stuff. Like, um, yeah. receipt, not receipts, confirmation of loss of income. Like, they have to prove that throughout this period, they are going to be losing income. Already, that's just a very, it's a very arbitrary thing, but you have to prove, and the way that you prove it is by saying, I maybe I performed at this event for the past three years. This event comes up, it comes up in July. I know for a fact that we're not going to have it. You need documents, basically. They need all sorts of documents. They need emails saying, you know, from those booking people, Mm. you were supposed to perform here. This is the price. Mm. So invoice. You need to keep Mm. your invoices, your emails, your your receipts for past things that you're going to try to prove. And you're right. Most most artists won't won't think of keeping that stuff unless you know the big artists. Maybe because of tax reasons. I'm sure they have accountants by now. Surely they have people. Yeah, so um, yeah, they might have they might have stuff, but most general artists like I don't I don't know if they would even have the money to or if they even care about paying tax. <laughs> so mm, or paying those, I don't know, so <laughs> I, 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 I really don't think so. The other artists only care about paying tax because they are being watched. Yeah, so that's the only reason. Everyone else is not really being watched, but big artists are being watched because mm. they've been paid a lot of money. So mm. and the smaller the guys team. have. Um, the smaller guys have 90, some of them have 95s. So mm. because they have those, there's no real loss. <laughs> proving loss of income or proving that this is your main source of income now becomes difficult because if you're a rapper, but you're a yeah. lawyer, you're not going to get any of that relief money. No. Yeah. So that's the Dude, situation I'll, I'll, at the moment. I'll tell you from my personal experience right now, um, this is when you realize all these corporations and all these, all these things, they're not there for you. They, they're really not there for you. They're there mm-hmm. to take your, your, your bank charges. They're there to take your premiums. If it's insurance, they're there to take, they're there to take your money mm-hmm. um, with this illusion of we are there for you. Mm-hmm. But when things really hit the fan, which is right now in right this now. period. Yeah. Like I started speaking to my banker and I started being like, okay, cool. Um, you can see now that money isn't coming in as it was before. Like, what? How can you help me? What? what? Then they're talking about loans that are like twenty-three percent interest. Yeah, twenty-three percent interest. Um, that's that. That's what you get. And I'm like, no, no, no. Surely, as someone who's been loyal to this bank, as someone who has, I think I've taken out a loan before and I've repaid it ahead of time. Um, I've got like five accounts with this bank. Um, mm. and my car is with this bank. Like everything. I'm like, this is, you can look at my track record, my credit history. Everything is good to go. Why are you yeah. telling me about a loan that you're offering at 20? I'm like, you can probably bring that down by 10%. There's no reason to be charging me that much as a loyal customer with mm. all of this track uh, record. She tells me, no, uh, the best we can do is bring it down by 2.5%. Mm. I was like, so basically, during this COVID time, knowing that people are going to take out loans and people are going to are going to look for ways to cushion, you know, uh, the blow. Where they're saying, okay, please don't debit these things, the usual debit orders. Please don't take that. What, what, what? As a cushion, your answer is okay. Cool. Let's put you in debt. Let's put you in debt so that uh, uh, you can you can also drown on top of that. Because you'll get the money up front, but then you'll start paying and you'll start drowning. And then you'll be caught in the cycle that they want you to be in. Because if you're paying interest and you're in that loan, you're forced to be in that institution. You're forced uh, uh, probably to take out more loans in the future or to buy more things because you, you're drowning. Um, oh, so for their pro- Yes, exactly. All they'll do is just keep offering more products mm. to you. Mm. And that's when you see that none of these institutions are there for you. The, the image to say we are there for you is obviously to just sell their products and for you to be with them. But on the real, when it comes to on a one-to-one basis, they're not there for you. Even the whole idea of having this private banker thing, I thought it would benefit me. And 
I think with most, with most things I've seen that they've told me to go do it myself. They just say, oh yeah, you can do that over there. Uh, go do that. And I'm like, oh, but then why are you, uh, why are you here? So cool? Why are you here? If you just tell me to go do that myself. Is, so that, all, is that all you get? That's all you get, bro. Because I was hitting, I, like, um, uh, when I changed over and I got a, a guy, he phoned me. He was like, okay, I'm going to be dedicated to your thing. He said, he made me feel like he was, like, I could call him at any time. He's like, no, keep this number, do this. I've never called him for anything. The but day you called him. The, the, he's not going to tell me anything I don't know already. He's not going to offer me. He's just going to look at a catalog and be like, okay. Oh, he's going to tell, tell you to go online. Yeah. He's going to tell you, go online and do it here at the app and what, what, what. Go do that there. You're not going to do it for you. No, do that. Yeah. Um, so, so I was like, you know, it's cool. I'm, I'm just planning my exit from this institution. That's what I'm doing. I'm, I just, I know where I want to go. Um, but just in this time, obviously now that they've, they've, they've been all trapped uh, in terms of finances, uh, in this time, I'm going to have to stay with them. But as soon as things, as soon as things cool off, I'm out because mm-hmm. I'm going to treat, I realize that you got to treat some things as insurance, as, as, as you would insurance. Like if you, if you're not happy with an insurance company, you literally can call up another one. And in, by the end of the call, you're insured by them and you paid your last premium for the other one and it's done. Yeah. And I believe that in life and especially in this country where people are just satisfied with uh, 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 mediocrity and, mm-hmm. and just doing the bare minimum, um, you've got to show people as South Africans, we've got to show people more that look, we're not gonna, we're not gonna be down with this substandard service, mm. whatever it is, because we get it all the time. As South yeah, Africans, we get become it so everywhere. used to it. We've become so used to it, and even with music, to bring music into this, we've become so used to that. We're so used to a, yeah, this will do. Cool, <laughs> that's good enough. Oh, this, is the jam now. this is the jam. Okay, cool, man. Oh, this is the music video for the song. Okay, cool. Great, yeah, chef. you made a music video, and you know you can see it's an iPhone. You can see it's a not even an iPhone. You can see that there was no lighting. It was just literally mm. camera outside. It wasn't done well. Uh, the cheapest DSLR camera, and you know it was just like okay, chef, let's stand in front of a car and let's do what we got to do. And that's <laughs> that's essentially the whole South African culture. But and we're so used to taking that that we never force companies, we never force institutions to change. Yeah. By saying no, we're not gonna, we're not gonna accept that. I'm gonna change you. No, you can't give me what I want. I'm gonna go to another place. So I just decided for myself that I'm going to from now on treat everything like that. There's nothing that I'm stuck with. Mm-hmm. There's nothing. Even mm-hmm. with the financing of your car, you can halfway through, you can ask someone else to finance because all they'll do is pay the other person off, mm-hmm. and then you continue uh, paying that the, that 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 group. Um, or institution, you continue paying them your, your installments, maybe at a cheaper rate. So we all think that we're also stuck to these things that we get um, in this country. We actually are free to move around as much as we want, and we need to exercise that more to keep people under pressure and not just sitting at the top feeling like, ah, no, we can do whatever we want and people have to settle for that. Some of these guys, they'll have, like, they'll lock you in um with um no i know we're going like super way off now but like some of these guys will lock you in and they'll have a contract that you can usually get out of but there's always some kind of penalty or if it's they won't call it a penalty they'll say there's an admin fee and yes it will be exorbitant the thing will be huge so there was um a, a contract that i was in for my cell phone and once I got out of it, I was like, okay, now I want to leave. Then they offered me something else, but they offered it in a very underhanded, weird way, right? So essentially, mm-hmm. I was like, okay, you guys have offered, you offered me this. You can go back in your tapes and you can check. You offered me this. You are now giving me this. You didn't tell me. You weren't upfront about the way the, 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 the package was structured. Now, yeah. that, now that I get a chance to look at the nine items and break it down, this is not what you guys said. The guy said, Okay, no, it's fine. So you can we can take you off of this, or we can remove the contract altogether. But we're gonna need you to pay a, a penalty, an admin fee. The admin fee was huge, and I was like, "But now, what's the point?" Yeah, because now I'm Which locked in. So I think yeah. if you where you can, like insurance and stuff, definitely shop around. 
um, uh, what's this um, uh, health uh, health insurance as well medical aid medical also aid, those things, yes. shop around wherever shop around, it yeah. is. But um, and I guess this can then tie back into what we're saying, where the where we are now as South Africans with the economy, look, every economy at the moment is not doing so great, but where we are as South Africans now, where do, what conversations do we now have or have to have with regards to finances? Because now clearly the arts and culture door is very, it's not shut, it's just very, very difficult to get the key to open. Yeah. The typical gigs and that type of thing, that door is now shut, firmly sealed until we're allowed to have events again. What other avenues, and there's a lot, and we can break them down. What other avenues would you say for someone who is an artist, they live off of this thing, or even if they don't live off this thing, and this is maybe 50 to 60% of their income, how do they now get back into it? Where are the, where are the places they can enter into the industry and kind of you know, help themselves? Well, I think then in that case, you, I think we'd have to separate it into the two types of artists or like just, just to make two categories, right? Because I think it would apply differently for each one. Mm -hmm. One, you've got mainstream who's made it, who was booking shows, who was earning income, living life off music 100%. Then you've got people who music was never enough anyway. You know what I mean? Either they were getting a little bit and having to supplement it with something else or they weren't getting any money from using it and it was just, it was just people generally, you know, just trying to make it in the industry. Because I feel like for the first group of people, they, one, would have had to secure themselves financially uh, already. Um, they would have had to diverse their portfolio. And all that means was that already if money was, if money was guaranteed for music, you would have had to be taking that money and investing it in other things in life, which is what everyone tells you, you know, diverse, diverse, diverse. And it's for this reason. Uh, the richest people in the world will always talk, talk about diversifying your portfolio because they know that if something happens in one way that you're getting money, you need to have other things that are bringing in the money at the same time so that you know nothing hits you and nothing you, you you can take every blow you know the world basically has to explode in order for you to stop getting money and that's what they mean by diversifying so those artists mainstream artists that should have been the first thing that they did um they all these years they were earning money all these shows it's a lot of money i mean some people are booking uh, i don't know if you've seen that kid online he started a YouTube channel. He sounds like he's uh, from Limpopo. He sounds like he's Venda or something, but he started uh, this YouTube channel. And uh, one of his videos, his viral videos is I DM'd artists asking how much for performance. Oh, I so, think I saw that in my recommended. You saw that? What, what happened? It's actually pretty good. I like the kid. Like he's, I was like, oh, this is, you know, he's putting effort into it and it, it's a proper YouTube channel. Like it looks like, I, I hope he continues to do what he's, what he's doing. Um, but it, it was pretty good and uh, he got a lot of replies uh, from, mm. from managers and stuff. So you could actually see the figures. So I didn't watch the first one he ever did, but then he repeated one. But instead of DMing artists, he, he actually emailed their managers, which, which, which was probably a better strategy. Um, and he just pretended that he was a parent and he wanted the artist to come perform for their daughter's birthday and asked, how much would you charge? And you had figures like in above 100 Ks for the biggest ones. I think Nasty C was 100 K on the dot. I think the people who were higher were Casper. Like Casper charged a lot. I can't remember, but it was like close to 150 K or something like that. That's a party, not even an event. That's someone's cash, which they probably charge a bit lower um, um, given that it's a party and there's not going to be ticket sales at the door and things like that. They, they don't consider those things. So I would consider that lower of a charge. So some of them are charging 60, 80 um, um, some of the, probably from the 30s, from the artists who are, we know, but aren't like huge. They were charging 30s and stuff. So if you take those sums of money and you think to yourself, wow, in two performances, even the mediocre artists would be earning more than us as health professionals, in, in, even in private or government, to, to consider that, right? Just for two performances in the month, some of them would be earning more that media not mediocre but you know not mainstream not super mainstream artists so if you take that into consideration these people have a lot of money passing through their hands 
So that's why I said the preparation before this happened mm. would have already been step number one. Then we move on to step number uh, 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 two now that things already happened. These are the artists who, if they were not in touch with their fan base, are losing out. Mm. Because this is where your fan base now, this is your second diversification, you know, what do you want to call it? It's your fan base itself. Mm. You have, that's where you, the opportunity is. Yeah. Given that if you're amazing, you have a large fan base. Yeah. But now how in touch were you with this fan base? Mm-hmm. Were you riding the wave and you know, you like being above everyone and you weren't communicating, you weren't doing nothing, you were underground and you didn't want to do anything. You just wanted to be the artist and fans were below you. If that's the case, you won't eat from your fans now. Or you won't mm-hmm. eat as much as you could have. If you were in mm-hmm. touch with your fans, we both know that's where the opportunity is. Merch, or, yeah. merch, live performances with the, now they've created, you know, I don't know if it's YouTube or what, you can create a live performance with fans paying to get into that live performance. Yeah. Or fans get to donate during the live performance. You see that? Then you've got things like uh, GoFundMe, um, uh, what's the other one? Patreon, those mm-hmm. kind of things. Where now you can just ask fans to support you in this time. Yo, man, even if you donate 10 rand, it really helped me to make to continue making music. So that's the that's a huge part now of if you 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 had been in touch with your fan base, you would have had a second form of income. So yep. so yeah, and maybe well, third ties into the second one, which is basically merch. I already yeah. mentioned it. In yeah, merch yeah, thing. Yeah. And now you'd need to sell people products yeah. and do that. But you can't merch. do that if you don't have the... If you don't have the fan base. That's why I said this first part only it would mm-hmm. apply to people with large fan bases. Okay, yeah. For the rest of us, <laughs> with regards to music, I honestly don't see a way... And let, once again, even with a small fan base, even if you could get 100 people to buy a hoodie for... 500 bucks, that is what? What's the math on that? 5,000? You said 100 500? times? 500. 100 times 500. 50K. It's 50K. Wow. Okay. So, so even with a solid base of 100 fans, which not being famous, you can have. Mm. Solid 100 fans buying stuff. That for 500 rand, that was 50K. Mm. Which, you know, given if you, if you were a struggling artist or if you were someone not living a lavish life, 50K can be stretched over five months. Mm-hmm. It would probably be, great. be a little bit less because you'd have to, you'd be, you'd look at the profit. So your profit might oh, be yes, a little yeah. bit less. So mm-hmm. we're looking maybe like 25 to 30K. Yeah, which 25 can still to 30 be stretched. Which can still be stretched. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, which still can be stretched, but it always, it all depended on how in touch are you with your fans. Mm. I know now it was nice for me with this hoodie here. I was able to get in the last two months, probably it was nice, probably each month get three, 4,000 rand. Over the last how many months? Two months. Each month. Damn. What? <laughs> <laughs> Say it again, what? Hold on, wait. Are you kidding me? I need <laughs> these. I want these things. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Wait, yeah. now you had, you, had a, you, had a, you had a cool four or so K that was coming in each month. Yeah, uh, they had a, yeah. And pushing, pushing that. And if we do the whole profit thing, maybe mm. in the two months, four to five K profit, mm. your profit. Luckily, I'd actually bought these a while back when yeah. things were still good before lockdown. And <laughs> I bought them a while back. So... And I had no, I had the intention of giving them away at the time. And now I'm actually getting that money back. Mm. And it feels like it's, you know, it's it, all of the money's profit. It feels like all of the money's profit yeah. because of the fact that it's been so long since I bought them. Mm. You know, there weren't anything of value to me in any case. They were just sitting now, in stock. Yeah, they were just sitting in stock. Exactly. Now that I'm selling them, it's been great because I mean, 500, two people, it's a thousand, three people, it's 1.5. You know, it's the simple and made the made it, man. Yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's what it becomes with, with a piece of merch. And 
I realize now I'm like, wow, she's, you know, 100, 100 proper fans, 50K. That's a damn. I mean, that's, I'm actually shocked. I, I was thinking, okay, fine. What's it? 5,000 rand that I first guessed. Mm. But 50K with 100 fans, selling them a 500 rand hoodie. In fact, I was told by one of the fans to stop selling it for 400 rand. They're like, no, stop selling this for 400 rand. Sell this for five. They bought it. They're like, in fact, they deposited 500 rand, which is what made me put up. They were like, you are spending money already on, on, on sending this out. So for you to make a profit, charge 500 rand with no shame, we're going to buy. Mm. For real. They deposited really. 500. And that's when I increased my price. Mm. Was a fan. So, so the lesson, I guess, in all of this is fans are king. Mm. Fans mm. are everything. Fan, as an artist, fans, fans, fans. The more, the better in all sorts of ways. Fans yeah. get you there. So I'm trying to find a song that gets you there. Get fans who will get you there. Yeah. Instead of always trying to find uh, songs and stuff and say, oh, I need to send this to Metro because they're having a competition and that's how I'm going to be famous. Without proper fans, it's, it's going to mean nothing. So merch for us, um, what other way? Same kind of thing that apply to the bigger artists, but just know it's going to be smaller. You can still do GoFundMes. You can still mm. go uh, Patreon. You can still do live performances and ask people to donate to that. But just know it's not going to be stuff that essentially you know feeds you um in any sort of way also you would, you would have had to have the capital to buy the merch to start yeah, and to start it you know what I mean? in any case yeah but if so if you're struggling if you're struggling now just know that this is why they say um i, I don't want to get into the parents thing because that's that's more difficult one the thing of like okay but what about the fact that you know my parents say i must go study something before i can do music whatever but that's when this kind of thing comes into play that's what they're trying to that's what they're trying to uh, cushion they're scared of this scenario of yes you said you're going to do music but now a world pandemic hits which no one can predict uh, something happens in your life and no one can predict and you're literally down to zero because you have no other skills yeah. so i wouldn't necessarily just to sidetrack slightly with that i would say don't do something don't choose the the other thing because of your parents choose it for you because it's going to contribute to the skills that you have yeah so it's fine to be a waiter if you think it's like okay i'm shy and i don't like talking to people and i also need money let me go be the best waiter i can be because it will help me live and it will give me another skill that i can acquire so you don't have to look at things as like oh i need a proper job so people can take me seriously in life. no mm -hmm. what's more important is skills get yourself as many skills as you can because people will pay you for skills at the end of the day mm -hmm. and that's what this scenario is really uh, uh, not exploited, but like it's, it's revealing that, 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 that weakness that someone might have is that he doesn't have enough things going on. He doesn't have enough skills mm. that music is not even an option now because yeah. it, it sometimes takes money just to even get the music done. Mm. So it's not good news for smaller artists at all, but this mm. is life. This is Being life. a smaller artist now, um, I'm thinking about a message I got on Friday, two days ago. We were we were speaking on um, what happened. Uh, he was like, "But now, what do we do? We don't have capital. We don't have a fan base. Literally, you had nothing." So I questioned the guy, and I was like, "Look, you are in a situation now where." You're trying to you're trying to do something that is near on impossible. Now you have to now we have to start considering other things. You know how people always say, no, follow your dreams, do what you need to do, do it, whatever. So I questioned further and I was like, I don't want to sh shut the guy down, but what are you doing in terms of work? He said, nothing. What are you doing in terms of your music? Is it bringing you enough? He was like, no, it isn't. I was like, okay, fine. So you're not working. Are you studying? Maybe? No, he wasn't. And then he right after that he said, which means that I've got a lot of time. And that's when I was like, okay, here, here you go. The one thing that you do have now, you might not have, uh, you might not have equipment, you might not have music, you might not have merch, you might not have a fan base, but what you do have is time. Also, if you have a metric at the very least, 
now is the time for us to just say, get a job, which is what I said to him. I said, find a piece of, find work somewhere so that you're able to get kids. Like, no, but I want it to be from the music. I'm like, at this point now, you can't be fancy where the music comes from, where the money comes from. He was, he was showing me statements that were too small to live life. They were, he was getting statements from, you know, there's little Samro there, a little bit of um, streaming here, but it wasn't enough. It wasn't even enough to just get a meal. He's like, but if I can get this, so you see, he's taken the principles, which are correct, of if you can make 10 rand, you can make 100, you can make 1,000, you can make 10,000. But the, prob the problem is right now, he's making 10 rand. So it's too small at the moment for him. He, mm. he needed to, to just push another hustle for now, which I think might have been seen as failure, but it gives him the opportunity to re-up a lot stronger than before. Because now he's not coming from a point when things turn around as they do, as they always do in these situations. When they turn around, at least he'll be in a situation where he's got a little bit of money. Now he can push things for real and actually yeah. do stuff. Whereas if he keeps on sinking now, thinking that that little money that he's getting from wherever is going to carry him through, when things eventually do turn around, he's going to be even in worse debt. He's going to be in a worse situation. You wanna, Once the starting blocks open up, and we are now allowed to run again. We can do whatever we want to. We can push whatever hustles we want to. We need to be in a decent position. So I told him that, get a job, but at the same time, work on brand at the moment, which is, is very, very simple. He doesn't necessarily need um, 4K cameras and all of that stuff. So there was a lot of a, a push towards that day where, sure, he- You know what he does need? What? There's one thing he needs. He needs data. Yeah, that's in terms of and his phone. Data. That's the most important. If you are a broke artist right now, mm. data is the most, yeah. it's like the luxury thing you can have in terms of pushing your music. That's, that's equivalent to having a microphone, to having a computer. Mm. But data on your phone, and you can't tell me you don't because I've seen everyone on, on social media more than they've ever been now at the moment. Mm. So mm. people are clearly spending money on data, but they're not mm. using it for what they're saying is the passion or is the thing that they mm. want to do then that is that thing. Yeah. No, they, 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 that is true. Look, there are people who only have, they're using, um, uh, I was trying to push my beat tape and the one guy was complaining. Well, a lot of people were complaining, but one guy was complaining, look, bro, please send me some MP3s here because I only had enough money to buy WhatsApp data. But even there, there are people that he can contact and build with them and say, look, if it, there is a music producer who's down the street, get beats from them, get them sent to them, start making those videos with the data that you're saying and slowly build up um, their own brand. There's another guy who is from, I think he's, he's a vendor. I had an artist who came in and he was like, have you heard about this guy? He's, he started a radio station in lockdown. I was like, what the hell are you talking about? Hmm. In his room, just like this, he was in his room and he had his laptop and he had, I think it was his phone or a camera or something. And what he was doing was he was DJing. He essentially ran a show live with people, sending in messages, making phone calls. Um, what else were they doing? Um, he was playing music, doing dedications. People would send him tracks. He would play them. You know, he would push his own artists or whatever it is. That, and he created this huge world around him. And then what he did is then he got money and then he got a banner for himself that now sits behind you. That is, and that is amazing. He's built <laughs> yes. I think someone actually wants to build him a, you know, get him proper equipment now. Just all based off of that. And he's a, dude, when I saw his, vid, when I saw his views, I was like, this guy's intense. Like it was big and there's a lot of people commenting. Rightly so. I had no idea what the hell that he was saying. Um, I had no idea what the comments were, but there was a clear audience of people audience, yes. who had enough YouTube data, whatever it was, to watch this guy. And it was entertaining because he was speaking about the things that just, it, it all made sense to him. I happened to have a song with that artist who came in at that time that played on that day. That's what he was trying to show me. But he was showing me that this guy here has taken nothing, just a phone. He's taken, you know, little things here and there. He's tried to make it as unique and as much as, you know, him as possible. And he's uploaded that. And he's attracted, he's put good stuff out into, into the world. And it might not be right now, but over the next few months, maybe six or so months even, um, he will gain so much more. 
So there really is, I don't believe that there's an excuse. I don't believe that there's there an is. excuse. There isn't. It's like, uh, if, you, if you were an artist, right, and, mm-hmm. you, and you're making music, already there, you know, you must be someone who's somewhere along the line, money has come through your hands. And this, this concept of money coming through your hands is something I'm learning also because uh, if, if I look at my own personal finances, I'm like, Jesus, you know, where does the money go? You know, you see the salary that you've earned in the past, you're like, well, wait, where did the money go? Yeah. That, that's money that came through your hands and you let slip because you weren't looking as it came through your hands. It was coming to your hand out the other and then to the side, to something, mm-hmm. something. You're doing this the whole time. You're coming, okay, shop, and then, then you're just not noticing where that money is going. And we all have that. If you, you as a very broke person might realize that actually every month, somehow 500 rand comes through my hands. The fact that I'm alive today as that broke person says that, you know, somewhere, somehow Damn. 500 rand, something is coming through my hands. You now, the first move you need to make is realize what the hell is coming in mm. and then stop what is going out. Mm. That is basic. Even, even with uh, 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 literature and things you can read about uh, making money and things like that, they always say the first move is to stop losing money. Yeah, plug That's up the, the holes. Move. You can mm. become rich just by not losing money. Mm. Um, that uh, you've seen Investor Bunny or something like that. What's that girl's name? The South African uh, one, eh? yeah. I've, I've yeah, the South African girl, yeah. yeah. Who became a millionaire uh, uh, like you know it became a millionaire and she started her own youtube channel that's that's another channel to go to go check out uh for anyone watching this is that go check out that channel and find out how she made money but the summary of what she said was i just stopped spending money mm. and even when i started getting more money i did not increase how much i spent Mm. So that was that concept. She still realized that, you know, too much is leaving the side. Let me stop what's leaving and gather as much here in the middle. Because that's what will start happening. Is that the middle part will start building up. And then she eventually got to a million because from the time she was only earning 3,000 rand or something like that, she already started living a certain lifestyle in a certain way that allowed her to have a little bit of change. And then when she started earning five more change, she started earning 10, even more change because nothing's increasing on where she started. Nothing's mm. increasing. Mm. You can imagine by the time someone's earning, earning 30,000 and they've got only less than, less than 5,000 rand expenses, now it's 25K a month you're putting away. Just being so away. That's, yeah, that's the first thing you need to realize. Even oh. if you come from nothing, I'm telling you somewhere, some, somewhere along the line, money came through your head. Mm. That's why you're alive. Or well, that's why you, you, you've tasted a sweet recently. That's why you've had something good. It's not all gloom and doom. Um, so, it's, sorry, just, a, if I can just, just interrupt there, because I know sometimes it happened to me as well, that people will hear this and be like, ah, oh, you're speaking from a position of privilege. You have stuff. Like, I look in the background there, I see things. There's objects. You're in a comfortable space. I'm in a comfortable space here as well. And you can say like you know how can you speak you know so maybe if you can just for a second talk about your because i know we both didn't have it the best (laughs) just to just to elaborate a little bit on that you know you you i know you understand um both of us being from the eastern cape your side a little bit more rural a lot more rural than my side but we understand what it means to have small amounts coming in even as students we had a little bit of cash that we'd spend in a specific way, uh, and yeah, it would then we'd then make the most of it where we could. Yeah, so that's can, yeah, yeah. So so essentially, when you come from a place where people don't have much, which a lot of people in South Africa, like you know, where people don't have much, I always say the first thing you've got to have is perspective, because someone even in your neighborhood. You know, for a fact, someone is looking at you in your neighborhood saying, yo, I just wish I was like that kid. I wish I had that. Mm. I wish I had whatever he has. And I always bring it down to, to, to the poorest of people. Like now I'm talking poor, poor, no money. 
I always say, even that person there has something that another very poor person doesn't have. Those guys who pull around those carts uh, for the recycling, mm. there's so much that they have that another person doesn't have. Then the person sitting at the robots thinking they can't do anything. The fact that he has that little trailer that they ride around on, the fact that he has purpose when he wakes up in the morning, going to find whatever it is, the, the recyclables and things like that. At the end of the day, when he drops it off by that, uh, the, the truck stop, some truck comes and picks all of them up. Yeah. That's, that's cash exchange that person has for all the sweat he's worked off in the day. It's not that he didn't deserve it. He got it. But he's just as, he's in the same surroundings. But at least every day he's working up, waking up with a bit of purpose. purpose. He's, yes, at the end of the day, he knows he's going to eat through the hard work that he does during that day. And you know, it's, it's the thing of the humility of, of doing what he does, going through people's trash cans and stuff like that, and the, 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 the work ethic of just working hard, even, even though this thing is really small. Now, having pictured that, come back to your situation and tell me that you've got nothing going for you. You yeah. can't. You can't. Mm. I'm just giving you an example where people really have nothing yeah. and they're making something happen. Yeah. So... For any of us, anyone, if someone's watching this for starters, you are rich already. compared to this. Yeah, yes, that person is looking at you. If one of those guys was to come past wherever you are on your phone or, or, or on the internet, they already envy you because of what you have. Mm. So no one, no one can really say they have nothing. Mm. There, there are probably people in this world who really have nothing and death is probably the next thing that's going to happen. Mm. Starvation to death or something like death really is the thing that's going to happen to them. And even there, we've had stories where people have come back and done something. Yeah. You know what I mean? If there's someone out there in the world with a success story from literally starvation to something, to millions or whatever it is. So you can, it, it's, it's difficult for you to say you have nothing. Let's start, let's start there. And then now we move on to, okay, now that you're in this situation with technically no money and it's going to take you time to build up money, I would say ask yourself the right questions. The next step now is to ask yourself the right questions because what, they, what you're asking yourself in this situation, what we're all asking ourselves is, hey, where can I get more money? Yeah. That's an easy question. Easy questions don't lead you to the right place. Easy questions, because you're just going to look for easy answers, you're not going to get to the right place. Ask yourself, the most difficult question. And then you'll start moving in the right direction. What I mean by that is, okay, where am I going to get money? That's the question. And any of us can have that question. Uh, so you break it down. Okay, sharp. In order to get money, someone needs to pay me for something. Now you're starting to go down the right direction. Mm. Okay, what can I do that someone will pay me money for? You ask yourself, you see now, it was, where can I get money? Or I need money, whatever yeah. it is. Now you're asking yourself a more detailed question. What can I do for someone to pay me money? Okay. You start going down the right direction, but that right direction usually doesn't have the nice answers. It yeah. doesn't have the ones that you want to get up and do. That answer might be, Aish, my neighbor's been complaining about his garden. I need to go work in the garden next tomorrow and ask him for a job to work in his garden. Mm. He might not be a nice person. He might be someone who looked down on you. He might be someone who, who, who's always uh, telling you trash. I don't know. You're going to have to humble yourself in that, in that scenario and go ask to do the garden next door. And that's where people differ. Yeah, because yeah. people will say, ah, never. That's beneath me. I'm that is gonna, beneath I'm not going to do that. Yeah. But the guy might pay you 100 bucks or 50 mm. bucks to do his garden. And every day you do his garden, he says, I'm going to give you 50 rand. Now it's going to be, you like, ah, oh, but 50 rand, seven times uh, 50, that's now 350 only. What, what, what? It's 350 you would have never had. Yeah. 350 you would have never had. But and you so that's what means, to your, you can add to your 350 grant from the government as well. Yes. Yeah, you've got, now you've got 700. You got I have got 700, but because you were living off the 350 of the, of the, of the thing, the salary, now you're saying, okay, I'm going to create another 350 and that's going to be pure savings. Mm. And I'm going to do this for a year. See now, now patience comes into it. Humility, hard work, patience. patience. Yeah. 
the same stuff that we hear over and over from successful people. They keep telling us these things, mm. but we don't want to listen to that because mm. we, we don't want to know. That's not the answer we want. We want to know where's the yeah. money. Just don't the tell me about bullet. The They want the silver bullet. bullet. Exactly. The, the one thing that they can do that they can that will get them to the answer faster. We look for it. I've looked for yes. it many times before. Yes. And yes. unfortunately, in every single situation, when it fails, I sit back and I'm like, shit, and I knew this was gonna fail. We always know that it's gonna fail because you always know it's gonna fail. You always know it's, it's gonna, gonna blow up in your face and it's yeah. going to sink you. You exactly. always knew it was gonna happen. You always knew it was going to happen, but you were so desperate and you didn't have the patience. You didn't have the humility to go do something else. You didn't have the work ethic to do the harder thing. You wanted mm. that easy thing so much mm. that you went and risked it all and it's blown up in your face and you Completely. knew it was going to happen. Yeah. You knew it was going to happen. So the only way is to just put your head down and be like, you know what? I am at the bottom. I am going to go even further down. Yeah to come back. And that takes a lot for mm. someone to do. That, that, that resolve, that, that thinking, and, and then that execution of that takes a lot from a person. But mm. it's something that we are all capable of. That's true, that's true. You and know you have to do, a, you, mm. you just, the last thing that I was gonna say is that you have to do a thousand of those things. That you don't and by like. the time you've done a thousand, you'll probably be very comfortable doing them. And then you'll realize exactly why you make it to where you want to and everyone else is not there. Mm. And you, know, you won't even feel shame. I mean, I don't think anyone who's successful feels ashamed of that. If they've worked hard and they've done all those things, they know, they're like, and you, they listen to you and your story and they like, and then guy, mm. so what? So you what can understand you why they have no remorse. They're not going to like... Yeah, they don't, yeah, exactly. Time. Exactly, exactly. And those others who take advantage of you, they, they have no remorse either. They make mm. you pay for courses that are not really that valuable or whatever. They don't have much remorse for you because they're like, okay, you, you wanted the easy way out. I'm going to sell you this easy way out, knowing that it's not going to work. Mm. I know. Those people who sell you those courses and all of those things, they know that is not the solution. They know what the type of people at- they're going they to get. Yes, they just know there's more lazy people, meaning more customers to sell to. Mm. You can't sell things that make other people work hard. I don't know of anyone who sold any, you know, much things that make people work hard. I'm sure for even fitness industry people, they've got to do certain things that make it look cool or mm. say certain things. Lose belly fat fast. I've seen ones lose belly fat in one week. How oh, after studying uh, medicine, after studying medicine and seeing how the body works, I was like, wait a second. Week. Short of just pumping it out of you. <laughs> exactly. Short of liposuction, I don't know any way you would ah! physically. <laughs> just... <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Adrian, stop you it. Get, you need to get used to this, man. You need to get used to these things, man. I need to, oh, hell oh, no. I, need to oh. I need to find my dynamic. <laughs> anyway. Lose oh, belly fat. Lose belly fat. Oh, man. man. <laughs> <laughs> you could have at least warned me before we started. <laughs> ah, stop. But yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the situation. Yeah, man. So, easy way out more likely to blow up in your face. Exactly. Um, look for the harder thing to do in this time because if you learn, at least, you know, it's rough because this is when you're feeling the most pain, right? So you don't want to, no one wants to go down to a place where now they're going to have to feel even more pain. Even more pain. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense for me to now go to a place where I have to feel more pain now while I'm already feeling pain. But... The difference is, is that over time, if we're looking at a graph, is that going down will bring you up. Yeah. Whereas yeah. if you carry on this way, it means that even when things are over and things start getting easier, you'll still be here. You'll still be in the same spot. You'll still be there. Mm. So more, which, put you, which just puts you in the same situation where you'll still be in pain. Whereas going down, actually, there's, there's more likelihood of you coming back up and being happy in the future. Mm. But that now requires patience. Mm. And look, dude, we, we've lived it. 
if I can just rewind, mm. I'm going to put us on blast for a minute. If I can mm -hmm. rewind maybe three or four years, the situation we were in, working great jobs, moving to a place where we forcibly put ourselves in a situation where we would leave our jobs and focus on music. Mm. There, there was, a, there was a, a, a steep decline in terms of, you know, earnings and that type of thing. Um, but we knew that at some point it would get better. What we didn't know is how far and how long and how much work and how many sleepless, lonely, quiet nights with, you know, just very little it would take. Mm. And then we, when we thought we were at the bottom, remember we used to have those conversations where we were like, ah, man, we thought we couldn't get any lower than this. Yes, it got lower. And then we got lower. And then it carried on. And we got lower and lower and lower. And then we, get, we got to a point where we were just, um, I remember there was a day you, you pulled up to my place and you had a hoodie on. And you're like, I am so comfortable. <laughs> I am so low, but I am so comfortable in this. Really, there is no way but up from here. <laughs> I was, and that was true. That mm. was so true, bro. Like I didn't even realize. Like I was saying it at the time, mm. and but I was, I was. It was almost in disbelief, to be honest. I was like, I really didn't think I'd ever get this low in life, mm. and not even in terms of mood, just in terms of the uh, uh, like your situation, your finances, like everything. Just I never thought I would ever be in that boat. But mm. that's when the wheels started turning. Mm. And because we had put ourselves in that situation. Forcibly, yeah. You know, forcibly put ourselves in that situation. We still kind of had the minds. Because forcing yourselves to go down, you kind of realize that, okay, every action that I take has the consequence. Mm. So let me make more actions. You start to see things clear. You just start seeing things in that simple form. Oh, oh, okay, cool. If I do this, I'm more likely to get that. If I if I do this and it it I don't do it properly, I'm going to end up in a worse situation or it's gonna end up bad. Just having that basic thinking is essentially what gets people up and gets people successful in some way. It's just knowing what not to do. And knowing what you have to do. Mm. Those two things there, gone. Yep. Anyone sits, like, like listens to this and you, a lot of people know both things. But they're like, eh, eh. painful. That's pain. Yeah, so painful. Come to my, I'm like, mm -mm, that's pain. What I have to do and what I must stop doing, that's all painful. Because Very I really feel... Yes, I already feel pain. I'm really uncomfortable. Now you're telling me now the few things that are good in my life I must stop doing and the things that will make me feel even worse, you're telling me to run to them and I must start doing. That, that's why there's very few of us in the world as human beings who are successful. There's very few billionaires. It's point one or what, what, what uh, of, the, of, the, of the human population. Very few millionaires. Very few people who are, are successful in terms of what they do, music, art, all of those things. Very few, because all of it requires the things we've been talking about. It requires people to just be like, you know what, I'm going to stop being myself and I'm going to literally do the opposite of everything that I've been doing. Sometimes that's the solution. Sometimes it's like, oh, what would I do? Okay, that's not the thing to that's do. That's not the thing to do. Especially if you... <laughs> Especially if you know if you know yourself, because that's another thing. It's huge. You have to know mm. yourself and know yes. that you've been a lazy person. Like there was a point mm -hmm. where I had to I had to understand that I was not great with my money uh, as it was coming in. I was like, I'm not doing the most with it that I could mm. be doing, or mm. I'm not putting out enough beats. I'm not doing enough of something. And you know, you and I we was calling each other out. I mean, you're not doing enough of that thing. You're not doing that. So to know yourself, and then after that, to be able to say, okay, sharp, I know I'm lazy. How yes. am I going to? How am I going to slice this? Bread? I'm going to how counter this. Yeah. How am I going to? Do how am I going to counter this? myself? And mm. that's that's literally the trick to being successful. I have an example now. Recently, um, even with finances, I was like, okay, but I don't go out. I don't do anything. Where's my money going? And I was, I went back and I was like, okay, look 
at what you've done just in the last three months. And I started finding things that I thought were okay, you know, but I realized that no, that was me still having some form of a luxury and I've been reluctant to let go of the luxury and I've given, I've made up all the excuses to, to not let go of that luxury that I was spending money on this and it was money lost. And if you add up the money, you could do with it now. Even if mm. you're saying it's a hundred, if it's a hundred rand subscription, well, guess what? For two years of that hundred rand subscription, that's 2,400 you wish you would have had now. Isn't it? You know what I mean? Mm. So all of there's even more answers there if you start going down that path. Mm. But a lot of us don't do that. We don't do that, that reflection or that auditing mm. of ourselves. We need to all audit ourselves and be like, okay, for real now. Um, it can't be that everything you're doing okay. I mean, in life is great or okay. Go find the faults, basically. Mm. Go find the faults they're for there. yourself. they there. Yes, they're there. And you'll see them very easily. It's just mm. most of us spend our time not wanting to look at them. Yeah. So we know they're there. But you're just like, I... I no, no, no. Yeah. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not that. interested in I just it. want to be happy. I just want to be happy. I just yeah. want to be I just want to be me. Let me do this. It's the one thing you convince yourself that no 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 come on guys. Ah, it's the one thing I have. Come surely on, man. I can't yeah. be yeah, no, surely I can, I need to hold on to this. You find excuses for your personality, yeah. even if you're a person who puts, you know, who says what they want, and you're like, Yeah, but that that means people can't mess with me and, and you realize that maybe you've missed out on a lot of opportunities because You've been that person. Thing. Yeah. So money that you could have had because your pride started becoming a thing of pride, but you never admitted to yourself that this is actually pride. That's mm. pushing this thing. It's not necessary. More money missed out, more opportunities, more, more ways to be successful missed out because of that one little thing that you've known that you, your whole life you have, but you've never dealt with mm. because you found excuses to keep it there. But that could be the difference between you and money all the time. Yeah. And it always adds yeah. up. So, and so yeah. stubbornness so, that we all have, man. There's this massive yes. stubbornness. That um, mm. uh, the thing I like to do for kicks sometimes is just recommend that one app. I think I recommended it to you as well. Yes, yes, yes. The 24, one, 22, 22, 7. 22, 22, 7. The one that, because the first time I looked at it, I was like, man, surely I'm watching everything that I'm doing. Everything is perfectly fine. There's, there's nothing. And then I looked and it, it amassed all the amounts that I was paying for. Two things stood out for me. Bank charges, which is a huge thing um, on all the stupid products that I had. And then the other mm. thing was um, airtime and data. Huge. And I was like, mm. this is a lot of money that's going out there. Because in your mind, when you're doing your budget, you're like, yeah, this month I'm going to spend 800 Rand on data. But you don't know. But then again, mm. you don't want to. And even now, I still get palpitations sometimes when I open it. And then it starts giving you those, those clues. And it says, you know that in the past six months, you spent this and this on this and that. Do you know that if you had taken that money and put it in an investment, then you'd have this much by now? It's yes. Here. It's the same way. Yeah, I've been avoiding. I, I, there's months where I look at the app, and there's months I avoid it, knowing what I've done. Exactly. Knowing what I've done. That's the thing. Exactly. I know. I know it's me. Yeah. I have no excuse. But I think, I think that's where this whole thing of, you know, people say you must have no excuses in life. You know, those so super. It's usually gym people and like, no excuses. Ugh, you gotta go for it. You know? I mean, once again, one of those things that are lost because some people hear it over and over again. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's a simple concept. Just live your life every day with no excuses but with the simplest of things, simplest of things, and find a way to blame yourself. Mm. It can be something as simple as, um, oh, I think, yeah, it was from a book I was reading, and he said, it can be something as simple as, if you end up in a car crash on your way to work, just a small bumper thing, right? You're gonna be so upset. And a lot of people get upset to the other person. And that person turned into me and did what, what, what. And, and they're upset, right? And they found a way to blame someone else. How do you blame yourself in that situation? Go back. Okay. Maybe I took that route because I was running late. Let's start there. And if I was earlier, I probably wouldn't have even come across that car. Mm. And now you found the actual underlying problem. 
in yourself. So I need to wake up earlier and I need to get to work on time. Then I won't try to take another route, a shortcut. I won't speed at any point. Mm, you'll be calm day. and that type of thing. So you'll you try calm, and, you'll be try relaxed. And it on yourself. Yes. Mm. But you that's see not, how it's not that, easy for people. There's a, that's not, no. we, we know a lot of people who are they're blameless. I, I move around yes. with a lot of people. They're, they're blameless, man. They're completely blameless. Whatever it is that's I happening. Think of everyone else. Mm. And it's a problem we have in this country. It's, I feel like it's a, I don't know if it's an African problem or just a worldly problem. I hear it's a worldly problem, but just the sense of entitlement to say that should something go wrong, it's happening to me. The world, yes. ah, the world is crashing. Ah, you know, the, the system. Yes. And you, just, when, you know it's bad when people start blaming whole institutions mm. to say the system doesn't want. Like there's certain things that we can say, like you and I, we can say, the, cert, the system, whatever the system is, doesn't want black men to win. That might be, this is a, this is a thing that I hear it a lot from my contemporaries. Like, ah, you know, it's not designed for us. You know what? Sharp. Okay, cool. That might be the case, but... It's not designed for us to do it easily. Hmm. That's what it's not designed for. It's not designed for us to do it easily. But you can't say that it's literally shackling you. Yes. It's tied you up. And you can't wake up in the morning and you're told to lie there because there's a gun pointed to your head. And if you mm. blink, they will shoot you. It's not that situation. So if it's not that situation, then... There's something you can do. Can you blame it 100% on... Yeah, there's something you exactly. can do. And then you ask that question, what are you doing? No, you know, there's this, but they make it difficult because of this. Oh, I'll never get that because of that. Then it just becomes this internal thing where it's you, there's like... A, a version of yourself that's talking back to you and saying, no, you are not mm. going to get this thing done. It's not going to happen. And before you even get going, before you even, you know, put on your shoes and start running, you are already like, what's the use? What's the point? And you have this yes. defeatist mentality and it's just, it yes. destroys the whole, the whole move. It does. It does. <laughs> it does exactly <laughs> that. You, when you, it, you, you feel helpless but the crazy thing is you are the answer. With everything, you are actually the answer. And, and psychologically, even with depression and things like that, people who get depressed all the time, um, they're really susceptible to it, mm. given that they've actually got a chemical imbalance happening in their head. But what doesn't help is that as, as you go through life every single day, you feel attacked, you feel you're the victim of everything. Because then obviously, we, you really have a, a handicap going for you in that you, 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 you're known with depression. But now going through every single day, waiting for things to happen to you and not being proactive, all you're doing is just setting yourself up for failure. Whereas I'm not saying that the depression doesn't exist. The problem is that you, you're more likely to trigger it if you don't start becoming proactive. Because there'll be spells where you go through proper depression. You have to be admitted to hospital. You know, you treat it as a psychiatric patient. Yes, that, you can't do much at that point. But the moment life is kind of okay, you know, before the next spell of depression, mm. that's when you need to act. That's when you need to be proactive and say, okay, how do I counter this thing? I need to start introducing more positive things in my life. Okay, this friend is negative, need to cancel them. This friend is always getting me to drink, need to cancel them. This friend is, uh, 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 has never been helpful, is always bringing me down and insulting me, or right, need to cancel them. First bit of practical, proactive thing you've done. Okay, I don't do enough things in the day because I end up bored and I end up thinking about how bad my life is. I need to find out what I love doing, at least something, one thing that makes me happy doing. Mm. And let me make sure that once a day, I'm doing that thing and I, have, and I have that thing to look forward to. And you get this thing called cognitive behavioral therapy where all they do is basically get you to see how you look at things, which is, sounds simple, but like it's, it's, it's actually a difficult thing, which is the problem mm. with a lot of psychiatric conditions, whether it's PTSD or whatever it is. Um, it's how you perceive that thing. And when you become more proactive and you create a, a mindset where it's like, oh, okay, this thing is, I'm not the victim of this thing. Like, it's actually not me. Even just be able to say, it's not me. It's actually that other person. That person's having a bad day. Already, that, just that thinking mm. alone is going to save it's you contagious. so much pain. Yeah. It's going to save you so much pain because 
no insult can really get to you then from that point onwards. Mm. And somebody says you ugly, okay, shut up. What what was what was behind that person yeah, actually doing that? Yeah, yeah. Why why do they feel the need to say those words out loud? What 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 was going on in their life mm. that they needed to say those words? They must be hurting some way. Yeah. That person must be going through something for him to actually have the energy to 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 hate that much and say to someone you are ugly. Mm. Then you realize, oh, it's actually got nothing to do with me, even if I'm not that good looking of a person. But for them to have said it is something that's going on with them. And that's what the therapy is about. And that's what a lot of people just have to, to find a way of doing things. It's just be more proactive about what you do because everything that happens to you is actually because of you somewhere along the line. Whether it's how you perceive things, whether it's defense mechanisms that you didn't build up before or uh, uh, you didn't plan for something and that's why it failed. Because it's, easy it's easier than if you blame yourself for everything, it's easier to fix everything. If you blame other people for stuff, then you can't fix it. Mm. Then that's when you feel helpless. And yeah, a lot of people you do that. They take it out of their own hands and the moment mm. they do that, then it's the, the, the solutions also become based on other people. Mm. You start waiting for government to give you something. You start waiting for the job to increase your pay. You start, you start waiting mm. for all these things to happen. And then that then in turn becomes, frustra it becomes frustrating. And then you start to complain about those very same things. Government is not doing this. My employer is not doing this. My situation is not doing this. Then it becomes a situation where the world just wants you to fail. You kind of just, the, everything caves in on you. Nothing's happened. Nothing's happened. Nothing's physically happened. It's not, it's not, you're not dying or yeah, anything. You've just actually changed. changed. Yeah. Yes. Nothing's, Nothing's changed. changed. Just, yeah. yeah. Nothing's changed. Um, some people are now, even through COVID, are actually okay. But it's through their preparation and everything that they've done in the past that they actually sitting and they're okay. They see that there's a pandemic. They see that there's, you know, people are suffering, but they're okay because they were like, yeah, well, that's why I did this before. That's why I did that. And that's why, that's why I went and worked at that place. That's why um, I put this money aside. That's why I invested in that. That's all of these things. Or oh, that's why I went to study this. Even when, even when I didn't want to study that, that's why I went to study it. You know, all of these things that they've done that were painful and then going down has either meant that they're happy now or they're actually okay. Yeah. But they're not sitting in, they're not sitting in a place where, where it's, it's all pain now because job losses, people are, uh, everyone around you is sick and people are dying and all of these things that now you feel like are out of control, out of your control and that you are helpless about now um, for, 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 for everyone. But I mean, seeing as we're talking about artists, that's essentially what's happened with them. So with that first group I mentioned with the big artists, I'm sorry, but that's when you should have prepared mm. when things were good. <laughs> You had your all that show money, <laughs> all the show money that came through your hands, all the opportunities you had to meet people, shake hands with other people in different industries, and possibly create another income uh, stream. All that time you had, because not necessarily you were paid, but you didn't really have anything to do. You didn't have a next performance. You didn't, you know, there was nothing for you to actually do, and you decided to spend five days. Uh, uh, doing nuts, <laughs> goofing off completely, yeah, or partying, or, or, or whatever. Yeah, spending it, spending the yeah, or even spending the money. Mm. That's why I'm like, okay, I can't really feel that sorry for you because at some point the money was there, mm. the money did come through your hand. And I think a lot of them who even you know had a good, good people around them, I'm sure they've done stuff, I'm sure they have other businesses, and I'm yeah, sure we can help, we can help, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure that you know. It's, 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 it's been a lot of people in this country, a lot of artists who have taken drugs, people who've, who failed, people who were at the top and sunk, that I think this, this group of now celebrities and stuff kind of understand that. I, let me not be that party person. Let me I'm not, not be that be person. Statistic. But unfortunately, yeah, I don't want to be a statistic. This is the statistic. problem. The problem is they are. This, they're still there. They're, they're still there. But I think a lot more people have a lot more people have learned. A lot more yeah, people have learned. Yeah. I think we have a lot of celebrities who probably maybe are richer than we even think or even know. Mm. But just based on the fact that they're like, you know what? Hey, me, I drive my polo. I drive my, 
I live in my flat. I could drive another thing or could do another thing, but uh-uh. so, yeah, know, quite a lot. The, yeah, I'm quite sure a lot, there's lot the, the thing is the the ones that are the ones that I've the ones that I communicate with. I can see either based on their lifestyle or based on the lifestyle of the ones that they tell they then tell me about. It's mm. not a lot of the times. There's a there's a there's a there's a state situation of status situation of circumstance situation mm. of bad friends um, mm. those things and before it was they were able to mask it with co- um, uh, with with just you know it's it's this is how it is it's just how it is but now that the whole world everybody's in trouble i can see some of them have stepped back some of them have sold their car and gotten a cheaper one some of them have kind of dialed down on the extravagant things that they're doing, but some you can still see are still, still trying to maintain something that, from the outside, you can see that there's no way that they're going to maintain. Either mm. be it they're still going to the shops because they feel they need to ball out and show people mm. that even through this time I can afford just because I've got access to, but yes. they actually don't. All they have is credit or access to credit, and that yeah, but- it's. It applies, I know this sounds crazy, but it applies to even the, uh, I've said this before about uh, uh, slay queens, right? I'm like, yo, slay queens see money, bro. I'm like, some of them, you know, you know, they're living lives that, you know, through with all our medical degrees put together, we could never see that life. <laughs> ever, 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 so ever they, see. They're multi-millionaires who know, they buy, they're getting flats bought for them, they're getting cars bought for them, they're getting mm. trips to, they're getting pocket money, they're getting food they're getting a lot of things right to be a slave queen there are some of them who are really smart and they made the person put the card under, the, under their name they made uh, uh they they took the money and they put it aside or they studied or they used the money to study to pay fees or ask the, the person to pay the school fees um they 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 saved some of the money what 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 and then when all of this happened the, one of the first jokes that were going around was that Look now, no slay queens are, are posting anything about the extravagant lives they live in. And it was funny because, you know, these people are always, you know, in Dubai or, or at parties and what, 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 or getting new hair and things like that, because it's all paid for. But now all the husbands are with their wives at home and <laughs> forced to be with their wives at home. Yeah. There's no more business trips, like business trip to where? Be home. <laughs> I'm going away. You can't go nowhere. So in, 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 a, in a way, their industry was affected, right? But the ones who were smart enough to when things were good, realize that this is not forever. Mm. This is not, first of all, this relationship is not even something it's that can rocky. last. It's already rocky. I know this is temporary. So I need I know what I need to do. I know that I just need to live a certain way. And everything that else that comes will be extra and it's a bonus and I'll put it away. I'll take advantage of it. Someone, I'm sure there was even, I'm sure there's somewhere there's a slay queen who was with a business guy and she go to these meetings maybe yeah. or go somewhere, shake hands, events, yes, mm. shake hands or parties, shake hands with these people, mm. start getting to know what they do. And you know, that kind of thinking in life, mm. that will get you ahead, no matter how bad it is, because not everyone is happy to be a slave queen. So it really is financial. I was born pretty and I'm struggling and this is my solution. And it's ugly and no one should have to do it. But someone was like, I'm going to do this ugly thing in order to make sure that I get out of mm, my situation. Okay. Right, it's a, temporary, it's a temporary measure. Yes, it was a temporary measure for them. So, so it applies to everyone, the same concept, that when things are good or when things are okay, don't be afraid of this thing of going down. Going down, make sure that ahead mm. things will be good, no matter how bad things get. Now you're not so shaken by everything that happens in the world or around you. Things don't shake you as much because you are so prepared for, for all the bad things. And you've already been to the bottom or you've already mm. gone down, so it's fine. It's even, if, even if it happens. Yeah, it's comfortable there. Man. Even yeah. if it's like now, oh, I'm going to sell my car. Shut sure, up, I'll sell my car. Mm. I won't drive a BM, I'll drive a Tez, or I'll drive, um, I'll drive a Polo, I'll drive, I'll drive something very cheap. I have no shame in that. I know what it does for me. It, it, will, it will actually make sure I save money. And then when everything's over and I start earning money again, I can actually, all that money I saved, now I can actually put it as a deposit on a car or I can actually pay half the car off and I'll be living even better by driving yeah, a nicer car. A nicer you know, car. Nicer, yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? And I'll be more comfortable driving that nice car. 
So that is the that is the biggest lesson that artists with nothing at the moment need to consider. I know you want to do your art first, you want to make your music, but just know that in order to get there, you're gonna to have to do a lot of things you don't like and you don't want to do. So rather just get into that mentality now. Just just get comfortable there. Just get comfortable doing things you don't want to do mm-hmm. over and over again, not just once, over and mm-hmm. over again. Yes, it still will feel the same. It's, even with us, still for stuff, it still feels the same. But the difference is that, you know, you just, you can be like, okay, get over it. I have to do it. The end. I don't want to do it, but I know I have to do it. I I must do it. Let me do it. And then you just do it. And that's only through doing it over and over again and failing and and letting life eat you alive and (laughs) being laughed at and being ridiculed. All of that stuff, right? Really, the thick skin does eventually develop the more you do it. And then it becomes like, it becomes silly because then you start laughing at other people. You're like, oh, this person's genuinely laughing at me for, for doing something that's really good for myself. And then you start realizing, oh, shame. Mm. They, it's, they unhappy. Yeah. They're the ones. Or they're insecure the or they have the problem, which goes back. Yes, to they have the problem. Mindset. Yeah. Exactly. And then you've built a whole different mindset. So, yeah, I don't know how much more, how many, how many other things we can, we could, we could tell people. Uh, no, nah, I think that's, I think it's good. I think it's really I, good. I, I, I need that thing. <laughs> I need that thing just for my life, bro. I wish I had that thing just for times and randomly having a conversation with someone. You drop a, you drop a dime. Wee, 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 wee. Just playing out of your pocket. Wee, wee. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Standard. Man. Yeah. Oh, man. That's a wrap on episode two. Episode two? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Episode two. Yeah, that's a wrap on episode two. Um, let's do another one next week. Let's keep this going. Let's 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 get soundproof off the ground, my guy. Let's oh, get off soundproof off the ground. Who knows what I'll bring next time? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you're so dumb. I'm so dumb. <laughs> nah, right. dude, let me.